Welcome back for another video on the best YouTube channel ever. Today's video will be about the Burlington Locos gang and the incidents involving different rival gangs. The hood was started in 1985. It began on 18th Street and Burlington Ave. Originally a street football team, part Burlington Locos who grew up around Toberman Park and the Burlington Boys who hung around the Red Shield. Once a gang, the hood was split into cliques. The Locos, mostly OGs, the Winos, the Crazy Mexicans, and the Psychos. Recently, the youngsters are known as the Killer Bees. The 18 Street Gang used to dominate Toberman, but the very 18 Streeters who used to control Toberman either died, are incarcerated, or became drug addicts. Ever since then, dispute over territory has been a factor why Burlington Locos and 18th Street beef with each other. On the evening of February 24, 1989, a conflict took place between the Burlington Locos and the Crazy Riders, a rival gang, over some graffiti. Shy Boy, a Burlington Locos member, was injured by the Crazy Riders. Afterwards, members of the Burlington Locos, including Leonardo and Sergio, whose gang moniker was Devil, met at Toberman Park to plan a drive-by shooting. It was decided that the attack would take place at 1831 to 1833 South Orchard, where they believed Crazy Riders conjugated. In furtherance of the plan, the Burlington Locos stole a red Camaro and retrieved two loaded shotguns from a hiding place in a nearby alley. Four of the gang, including Leonardo and Sergio, were in the Camaro as it proceeded north along Orchard. Leonardo, whose earlier request to be a shooter was denied, pointed out a group of crazy riders standing in front of 1831 South Orchard. The vehicle then made a U-turn and proceeded southbound. Shots were fired from the Camaro, which was momentarily stopped. Sergio, who was in the right rear of the vehicle, fired three rounds from a 12-gauge shotgun into the group. Another person in the front passenger seat also fired toward the group. After driving away, the occupants of the Camaro discussed driving by again for more shooting. Leonardo, who expressed his disappointment that there had been apparently no casualties, directed the driver to return to the scene. After deciding it was too risky, they drove back to their own neighborhood and disposed of the Camaro and shotguns. Later, Sergio, Leonardo, and other fellow gang members had a party at a beach near Santa Monica. The attack took place on February 25, 1989, around 9 to 9.30 p.m. Although no crazy riders were injured or killed, one 11-year-old bystander, Jasmine Guevara, was killed, and another bystander, the girl's aunt, Blanca Guevara, was seriously injured as a result of the attack. Another bystander, Melda Guevara, Jasmine's sister, was not injured. Sergio, from Burlington Locos, was sentenced to the term of 25 years to life in prison. At around 9 p.m. on June 7, 2008, Adrian Castro and his wife, Bernice Castro, were the driver and front passenger in Adrian's uncle's van heading down Valencia toward Pico in Los Angeles to get some milk for their one-year-old son who was in a car seat between them. In the middle of the van were Adrian's mother, Adela Garcia, and his younger brother and sister, a minor, and Arturo Castro. Adrian's older brother was lying down in the back. There was a blackout in the neighborhood and the lights were out. Bernice heard someone yell F-18 and she put her head out the window. She saw Douglas Espino, whom she had seen frequently in the neighborhood, wearing a white shirt and standing with three other men dressed in black on the sidewalk on the van's passenger side. Adrian stopped the van and then moved it slowly forward. Espino walked toward the van throwing gang hand signs and pulling something out of the pocket of his pants. Bernice heard what she thought were rocks being thrown against the van and felt something hot on her right arm, which she then saw was bleeding. Bernice turned toward the window and saw Espino walking toward the back of the van and shooting a handgun. She was hit twice on the right hand and shoulder. The second shot hit her while she was hugging her son to protect him. Bernice had also seen Luis Vasquez in the area, but she did not see him that night. A couple of days later, Bernice identified Douglas Espino as a shooter in a six-pack photograph lineup. 
Adrian's brother, Arturo, testified that he was sleeping on the van's floor next to the back doors when he heard gunshots. And then, F-18, he was hit by a bullet that went through his hand and then through his cheek, breaking his jaw and lodging in his throat where the bullet remained at the time of his testimony. Adrian testified that as he drove on Valencia toward Pico, he saw Espino, whom she knew from seeing him every day in the neighborhood, and some other men on the sidewalk on the passenger side of the van and heard Espino say, F-18, fake teen, and it's all about Burlington, man. Adrian could see Espino clearly. He was wearing a black shirt. Adrian knew these epithets were references to another gang, 18th Street. Nobody in the van said anything to Espino. Another witness said Luis Vasquez was about to leave when Torres heard Espino yell, fake teen, and heard gunshots, both coming from across the street and saw a van passing by going towards Pico. Torres saw Espino shooting and walking towards the van. He was unsure that Espino fired the gun. When he finished shooting, Espino ran diagonally towards Torres' side of the street. Luis Vasquez took a handgun out of his waistband. Luis Vasquez heard four or five shots. Torres did not hear any yelling or hear or see any shooting from the van. A jury convicted Luis Vasquez of seven counts of attempted voluntary manslaughter and one count of shooting at an occupied motor vehicle and convicted his co-defendant Douglas Espino of seven counts of attempted murder and one count of shooting at an occupied vehicle. The jury found true gang and firearm enhancement allegations as to each defendant. The trial court sentenced Douglas Espino to 40 years to life. Luis Vasquez's punishment was not exactly quite clear, but based off his co-defendant, Douglas Espino, Luis Vasquez's punishment must be severe.